Yeah, just real quick, want to um, give our condolences to the Temple community as well as the Dartmouth community. Um, significant losses, so I just wanted to take a minute and, uh, and uh, address that, uh, but open up to questions. What, what do you specifically ask? That's a very broad question. Um, it was it was a hostile environment. Fans weren't kind to Penn State. The backup quarterback had troubles. Do you look back and go, how do they apply now? Uh, no, I'm 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 worried about the things that we have to do to have our team prepared. Um, you know. And I think we've done that. Um, we'll continue to do that all week long to give us the best chance to be successful. But, but no, um, no comments or or or, or uh, points about that. Well, it's interesting because he was in a similar situation, you know, with Joey, um, to a degree. Um, but yeah, I think it, it shows a lot of respect for him. It also shows the, that we have other playmakers on the field. It's not like you can go away from him and then have success throwing other places when we had when we were able to get four uh, interceptions and also fumble recovery. So, um, you know, I, I think you guys know I, I kind of went into this in detail about my respect and appreciation for the guys that we got in our DB room as well as the coaches that are coaching them. Um, you know, and that's really what you want. You know, you really want uh, DBs and specifically corners out there that can cause problems and make things difficult for you. And if you decide to go away from one corner because he's so well respected nationally, and then you go to the other corners and those guys uh, intercept, I think those guys had two interceptions, um, you know, then obviously that's, that's, that's positive. Yeah, not really. Um, you know, I think I think growing up, obviously, I had a very good awareness. Obviously, growing up, growing up just outside of Philadelphia, of what Penn State was and what it was all about, but not to the level that I understand and appreciate it now. I'd never been to a game here. Um, you know, I came to a camp here. I think when I was in tenth or eleventh grade. Uh, but no, I didn't have a, an understanding or an appreciation of the of the whiteout. Uh, but now, obviously, uh, not only is it impactful for us, you think about how many of our guys talk about their recruiting process and and how the whiteout had a big impact on that. Um, you think about when we got here, a lot of the good players that were on the team uh, talking about that five overtime win with Michigan. It was a ton of guys on our roster that had experienced that. Um, you know, so it's meaningful. It's not just meaningful for our football program. This is a huge recruiting weekend for the other 30 sports as well. Um, you know, it'll be, as you guys know, it'll be in some ways a zoo this weekend. It'll be an increase of probably 250,000 people in town, uh, 110,000 people in the stadium, another 100,000 whatever tailgating. Uh, which is something I still look forward to doing at some point in my life. Tailgating sounds awesome. Um, but then a ton of recruits on official visits, on unofficial visits. And I think this is an opportunity that the other sports use to show the atmosphere and community that we have here. And if you come to Penn State and play volleyball, if you come to Penn State and play field hockey, this is the type of support you're going to get. Uh, and this is the type of community that you'll be, um, you know, that you'll be, uh, you know, able to experience. And then not only that, you know, all of these nationally televised games, uh, but also obviously specifically the whiteout. It's it's more than just athletics. It's it's an opportunity to showcase the entire university as a whole. I probably fight what you talk, what you're kind of mentioning, and I think you guys have heard me talk about it. I think what happens a lot of times with coaches, um, the wins can become expected, um, and the losses 
um, can be really kind of impactful. And you fight that, right? You, you want to, I, I tell myself and I tell the coaches and I tell the teams, you got to appreciate winning and what winning takes. Uh, and you look around the country and there's examples and I show the team and show the staff each week. There's examples of games um, every week that they weren't supposed to win or they weren't supposed to lose whatever vantage point you're looking at it from. So, you know, I fight that. Um, but I do think there's a natural tendency of that, whether it's whether it's uh, you know the impact of a loss emotionally, or whether it is the paranoia of the possibility of a loss. I don't want to become that bitter, old, paranoid coach, which which based I called my sister the other day. I don't know if I told you guys this or not. She goes, "Hey, you look like you've lost weight." She goes, and she goes, "But I was shocked at how gray your goatee was." You know, so it's like there's positives, but then there's also, you know, some some issues there. And it's kind of the same way with the game is I want to enjoy the wins. I want to enjoy the preparation. I want to enjoy all the things that go into it. I don't want to take it for granted. I don't want the stadium and the atmosphere uh, to be taken for granted by me, the players, anybody, because it is special. Um, but I fight those negative things that you're talking about because I, I don't want to become that guy. But I can see how it's possible. Yeah, well, I, I think I think there's a way that you can coach guys. I think you first of all, it, it starts with relationships, right? These guys knowing that you truly care about them as a player and their careers and their futures, but also that you care about them academically and you care about them personally and their families. And I think once that is established and known and that trust is built, then you can coach guys really hard, and that may be screaming and yelling. Uh, that may be demanding, um, you know, that may be holding guys accountable. But there's a line that you don't cross where, where some people make the mistake, where it becomes personal um, or it becomes demeaning. And I think, you know, maybe if you look back in the day, um, that was somewhat common, to be honest with you. I hate to say that, but it probably was back in the day. Um, and he's just one of those guys that I think I, I said that specifically about him because he can be really demanding and challenging on his guys. Um, but it's always in a way that they're receptive to and not defensive about, if that makes sense. And I think it's because over time he's shown them that he cares um, and that he's going to coach them uh, in a way that's going to be important for their careers but also in the team's best interest. That, that's one of the things we talk about all the time. We're not going to ask them to do anything that's not in their team, excuse me, that's not in their best interest and or the team's best interest. I did. I think he did some good things. As you guys know, he's, he's big, strong, powerful. He's athletic. He's quick. Um, Made some mistakes, some things that we gotta we gotta knock the rust off with. But but overall, I thought he played well, and he gives us you know a, another legitimate defensive tackle inside, uh, which is a position that's challenging to to develop depth at. Um, I think he has a chance to be special. He just needs more reps and and more experience. But uh, it was great. It was great having him back. How do you get a quarterback to hesitate? To hesitate? Oh, okay. I thought well, I thought you were talking about our quarterback. I'm like, I don't want our quarterback to hesitate. I think like, I was confused. I, um, yeah. So I think one of the big things for us in our defense is not necessarily hesitation, but we want to take the first read of the quarterback away. Um, so that's obviously route recognition. Uh, that is tendencies when it comes to formations and down and distance. Uh, that also is a big reason why we play man coverage, 
is to be able to try to get the quarterback off of his first read as much as he possibly can. So then he is holding on to the ball, which is going to allow us to get pressure on the quarterback, sacks on the quarterback, or pressure enough to cause turnovers like interceptions. So uh, I think that's a big belief in why we play so much press man. Um, yeah, is there strengths and weaknesses to anything? If they know you're in man, are you getting more man beaters? Yeah, but then you spend all your time on man beaters, right? So, um, you know, that's that's kind of the whole philosophy behind what we do, how we do it, and why we do it. Yeah, I, I think he was, like, I don't think it was that he wasn't cleared to play. He wasn't cleared in a way that we felt like he was going to be productive. Um, you know, and uh, to be honest with you, Omari's had some bumps and bruises. That's kind of why he's been limited. He could have played, but was not uh, practicing playing the way we think he's capable of. So, you know, having those guys back. But I think there's a difference, right? There's a difference between being cleared and you can go out and do it. Um, but but you're not at your best right now. So if we have the ability to wait a week to hopefully get them there, that, that's, that's what we'd like to do. And that's really kind of what happened last week to describe it in a little bit more detail. What's Yak Yakult? Obviously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so, um, you know, we've had we've had rain in the forecast, uh, you know, earlier this year. Uh, that's why, you know, whenever it rains, we take it as an opportunity, as long as there's not thunder or lightning, to practice in it. Um, you know, so I think that by doing that, I think your guys build confidence. That's just kind of a part of the game and something we do. Uh, but we, we practice in it. You know, the only time we'll come in is if it's like a jog. I don't want them just standing out there in the rain. Uh, but besides that, we're outside.